about the full three hours today, except for the 30 minutes when Estelin uh, is on uh, by himself with, with, with Knight, and just try to take about 20 calls an hour on any subject you want to discuss. But I would like to hear from you if you uh, would like to comment on it. But it is open phones. First time, long time, agree, disagree. I would like to hear from you out there on the nature of what the First Amendment really means. Congress shall make no law respecting establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or of the press or the people's right to peaceably assemble and petition the government for a redress of grievances. I think I got it all right there. The point is, going from memory, it's all right there. It doesn't give us those rights. It points out what was already there. And so you use it or you lose it. And I know we all know that like muscles. You don't use them, you lose them, they atrophy. But I'll tell you, I didn't work out for more than 15 years and gained about 100 pounds. It's taken me four or five years of working out, changing my diet, and taking supplements. I've lost more than half of it, and I intend to lose the rest. And that's an incredible attribute of the body. I'm older, and I shouldn't be able to you know, uh, reverse all I did when I was young, but I am, because that's how the body's designed if you don't turn it around too late. And it's the same thing for a country or a nation. We can turn ourselves around if we believe we can and rediscover the common sense narrative of freedom that's hiding in plain view. And the system knows a great time of change is coming and that we're at the bottom of a major decadence cycle right now. The system is aware of that. So it's moving in to try to suppress the people and admitting that on every front. They wanted to build their global tyranny, the architecture of oppression, quietly behind the scenes. But like, but like a giant ship in a shipyard, when they finally remove the curtain and open the big gates and cut the blocks and the ship goes into the water, it's revealing itself. And the ship has been launched. The dreadnought tyranny is upon us. But it hid itself because it knows the power of the people. <clears throat> Cynicism, not believing in liberty, being lazy, not caring about others, thinking you get ahead by only caring about yourself is what brings down civilizations. But also, caring about civilization but being manipulated into serving evil is what brings it down even faster. So it's not enough to care and be involved. You've got to be researched, and you've got to be involved in the right areas for the right causes. And the cause we're promoting is classic Americana, classic freedom, classic renaissance, classic enlightenment, classic victory, classic success, classic chivalry, classic honor, classic truth. Classic Bible, classic family, classic powerful male, powerful female role models celebrating honor, celebrating beauty, celebrating justice, celebrating courage, celebrating being destroyed in the fight against the dragons of evil, or sometimes prevailing. But it is the great animating contest that Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson and George Washington talked about that will make us or break us. So here's the toll-free number on this live Wednesday worldwide edition, 800-259-9231, 800-259-9231. And we will get you up and on the air. Again, 800-259-9231. David Knight will be popping in with some breaking news briefly at the bottom of the hour and chiming in anytime he feels like it. Uh, in the shower on uh, some of the callers we're going to be taking. Some of the news up on Infowars.com. Feds treated Black Friday boycott as terrorist threat. New documents reveal. Yeah, any form of, of knowing how to tie your shoelaces is terrorism. You just go watch football games, drink fluoride water, take vaccines, prepare to die of cancer. That's patriotism. Let the troops go die at the VA. Let them experiment on little black kids uh, with uh, pesticides till they die all over the country. No one gets in trouble. That was eight years ago, New York, states where it broke. Uh, black, white, Hispanic, Asian kids turned their oxygen off. Some of them died. Secret test, Joseph Mengele, don't get in trouble, federal government. National Institutes of Health. I mean, these people are demons. Not even the average cop at the Threat Fusion Center, but they're gathering data and getting used to seeing anyone who's good being listed as bad. Baltimore imposes... Daytime curfew on adolescents. That's right. As the society unravels, everyone will now be a criminal. They have de nighttime curfews on adults in many areas of the country. Secret service to track Twitter users in real time. Again, as if you're all terrorists. New reports. Bergdahl left note declaring intention to desert, renounce citizenship the night he walked off. <clears throat> I want to hear your take on Bergdahl. This is a total psyop now. There's no doubt I want to go over a list of things on that front.
The body count behind Bo Berg, an excellent report by Staff Sergeant Joe Biggs for InfoWars.com. It's all coming up today, but your phone calls are straight ahead. Stay with us. Calls are I never will. Uh, after I take some calls later in the next segment, I'm going to go over the Bo Bergdahl release that just is an absolute fraud on every front. Why would Obama do this? They know how to put out propaganda stunts. There is something going on behind this. And I haven't figured out what it is yet, but wrote a note that he was going to defect to uh, the Akani network, uh, all the rest of it, uh, all these people dying trying to get him. This just has PSYOP written all over it. There's no doubt. So maybe you can give me your take on it out there, listeners, on what you think's going on. We have a continual coverage at PrisonPlanet.com and InfoWars.com on that front. Uh, let's go to George in Connecticut. You're on the air. Thank you for calling in today. Hi, Alex. I'm wondering if we couldn't have a story, maybe for the, uh, the Europeans uh, in particular, rebranding Bilderberg as, the, as the, uh, the, the rise of the Nazis again, because Europeans are very sensitive to this issue, and if people realize that the same people are, that have are, uh, that are promoted uh, the Bilderberg movement are also the same people who promoted Hitler and, and various other things, and, and they start to look into this more deeply, and they wouldn't want these people on their soil. It would become like, like uh, having a plague upon your soil. And I think that's an important issue because uh, I don't think most Europeans see that yet. Some of them do, but not as a, as a large body. Incredible point. Appreciate your call. Just let me briefly comment on that, go to more calls. The Nazi thing's been way overplayed. That card is just, you know, don't like Obamacare, you're a Nazi. Don't turn your guns in, you're a Nazi. Don't want the borders totally open, you're a Nazi. But then if you're George Soros, a real Nazi collaborator, or Schwarzenegger, who said he admired Nazis, to Rolling Stone magazine, <sighs> and reportedly wears SS uniforms at home, I mean, I'm not kidding. That's all okay. So it's purely political when MSNBC says, I'm deeply racist, and then shows no proof. It just shows how they're totally fake, state-run, anti-American, anti-freedom media. Bilderberg was founded mainly by a bunch of former Nazis with a bunch of European robber barons and British and U.S. robber barons on record in 1954. And they bragged they founded the Euro and the rest of it. And it's true that it's not just the Nazis. There's always authoritarian interest who want authoritarianism to be able to take over a society. Joseph Mengele's family was royal. Uh, the royal family got behind Hitler uh, in, in Germany because they lost the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. And it's not that the Germans were the bad guys. The globalists were manipulating both sides, and that's been declassified. The British intelligence was actually helping fund a bunch of radical groups, the communists and the Nazis early on in the 20s and 30s because they want to destabilize things, just like they give arms to Assad and Al-Qaeda now to destabilize Syria. So it's the same story over and over again, and the EU project was a Hitler Nazi project, that's even in the BBC, and it was done by stealth, and they couldn't win with tanks, so they won with an economic takeover, but it's beyond the Nazis. It's financial interests that want authoritarianism. And now look, we're going under the Asian trade unions and the rest of it, all of our rights are being taken under it, internet rights, you name it. There's not even discussion in the media. Just like there's not discussion of Bilderberg in the control corporate press. Because people don't know there's a Pacific trade deal being done right now with 30 points. Only two of them have been leaked that are just freedom ending. We got the Copenhagen carbon tax treaty, so the whole thing fell apart. Just because we got the treaty. But we can't get the treaties. That's how much tyranny we're under. Let's jam in one more. David in Wisconsin, you're on the air. Thanks for calling. Hey, Alex, uh, big fan of your show. I have a pretty simple question. Uh, my grandpa asked me, because I was, I was talking about stuff you talk about and trying to wake him up, trying to wake up my family and all that. And he asked me, well, what is it that I can do, my generation can do? And he's 70 years old, so that's, you know, pretty old. He, he says, what, what can he do to uh, help wake people up? What is it he can do right now? He can learn about the New World Order. He can understand there's more media than just the mainstream dinosaur media. He can get involved. He can run for city council. He can go out and, and, and read the Bill of Rights and Constitution and then look around him and see what's wrong. And then he can decide how to get involved. Good people all have to do just a little bit. It'll bring down the tyranny. The problem is good people become spectators believing that they have no basic power. Great question. All right, we're off to the races. Two callers down. I want to take 20 calls. 
in the 30 minutes we've got left in this hour when we come back and David and I will be popping in as well. We've got more on the Bergdoll situation. We're on the march.